Hello Capricorn, welcome to your reading with me, Cindy. I don't know, it's just a day. I'm just, it's not actually just a day, it's a beautiful day. But there's something unusual about your energy. Every time I sit down to do a reading, this is the third time. This is the third time I've tried to record this for you. Capricorn, and not to try, like, I don't know what's going on between you and the cards. It just really feels like you and the cards. I don't mean to make it personal, um, but that's what it feels like. It's a weird feeling. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do actually, I'm going to do the Celtic cross spread for you. You know what it is? It feels like I sat there wanting to be very flowy and very intuitive and it's kind of working. And then something happened. Like I was doing one video for you. I was, I think I was 28 minutes into it. And then my phone, which I'm recording on, ran out of memory. <laughs> the heck and I realized like the last week of recordings I deleted them but I didn't go into the the deleted folder to like really remove them from the phone and I never do that so I thought, oh, shoot <laughs> so I got I sat down again and I did something else I thought oh, I'll use different cards and I don't know what it was it just wasn't flowing I you know what it's just almost like it's like if the cards don't really want to talk or they weren't talking with each other. <laughs> That's what it was. The cards weren't really talking with each other. And I thought, yeah, well, maybe I won't do it today. And then I thought, I just feel like I'm supposed to do it. I don't know if this is an exercise for me, if you'll ever see this. Maybe it is. Maybe this is just an exercise in futility for me. <laughs> it's futile. It's futile. Maybe something feels futile for you, Capricorn. I don't know. Maybe you've been trying to address something in different ways and it's not happening. So I'm using the Celtic cross spread because it's very definitive. This card is here. This is what it represents. I feel like, and this is what it's like, like trying to be flowy with your reading. And it felt like a, if I could get it to flow, then something mechanical went wrong. And then B, the mechanical aspect was working then the cards wouldn't talk anymore. <laughs> it's just, it's weird. So I feel like maybe there's a message here for you about that, about having a very practical approach and making like all, sure you're, all your T's are crossed and all your I's are dotted. I don't know. There is going to be, I think, if we get through this reading, an extended. And the link is at the top of the description. In the extended, I'm going to uh, pull out cards to get information for you um about uh <laughs> it's just like, i don't know what your energy is but it's a card i am fine and then i come in i sit here and it's just it's just a mess we're going to find out in the extended um advice and where energy is going to continue to go for you it feels really awkward that's what this feels like it feels like awkward so, you know, I'm going to do the tarot with the, the Celtic cross spread. But first, I pulled out my energy oracle deck and I thought, I want to pull out a card for you. Now, you guys started the, uh, the live that I did, well, I recorded from when I'm recording this yesterday. And I can't remember what card you pulled out. It seemed okay. What is all this? What is all this? You have Journey, Goddess of the Moon, and the Temple Path. Walking into the unknown, but it's a good place to go. That's what I feel like. Walking into the unknown, but it's a good place to go. Maybe use your intuition here. Take a leap of faith. Go for it. It's going to bring good stuff. It's going to bring deeper, higher things for you. But maybe you're struggling with this. Maybe you don't want to. Maybe you don't want to release and go into the unknown and use your intuition. Maybe that's why it feels like it's a struggle. Honest to goodness, my day's been flowing great. I went for a walk with Lily. It's really sunny out. It's beautiful. I sat down with my son for a little bit. We played some stuff, had some lunch, did some laundry. Gonna go skiing later today, and it's a beautiful day. Like, it's just, and as soon as I sit down, <laughs> you're reading Capricorn. I can't explain it. It's, it's befuddled. It's kind of befuddled energy. That's what I would say. The thinking woman and caring connections. Oh, wait. How did I 
they do that? No, victory sits between them. Well, isn't that funny? So maybe you're thinking a lot about a connection. Well, victory sits between these two points. Anyways, I'm going to leave it at that. That's the Energy Oracle deck. I'm going to pull out some tarot cards. I just get a weird feeling doing this reading. I can't explain it. I don't know. <laughs> like I'm, almost, I'm almost prepared to turn the camera off again, but I'm going to try to push through it. I don't feel like I'm forcing. See, that's the thing. Like, I wouldn't, I've just been times where I've sat down to do a reading and I won't because I feel like I'm forcing something that's just not meant to come through at this time. It doesn't feel like I'm forcing anything. Well, that's a strange thing. It just feels like your energy is odd. Something is off. See, of course it's just, okay, let's, let's just, let's, you know what, where is it, here it is, okay, let's do this, let's, let's clear, let's clear some the energy here, maybe you need an, an energy cleanse, are you ready Capricorn, okay, oh sorry too, if you're hypersensitive to um, louder noises, frequency shifts, um, if you have earplugs in, earbuds, just, Take the sound way down and then slowly bring it up to see what you're comfortable with. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna clear. We're gonna clear the air and the space right here, right now for Capricorn. shop. I know it. I'm in our image. Ooh, that sounded cool. <laughs> Maybe we're just supposed to play today, Capricorn. I don't know. Okay, I put the cards in. We're going to even clear the energy here. We're going to clear the energy in the cards. Well, this is heavy. I'm sorry, and I don't mean to be rude. I'm just saying something is off about your energy.
put a timestamp here. We're gonna set three now. Okay. Oh, I bet the card. What is going on? <laughs> Spit the card. Capricorn. It's like devilish energy really around you. Okay. Spirit guides. Spirit guides. Spirit guides. We're getting divine love and light and divine truth. Please bring messages of clarity, guidance, and the truth at this time for Capricorn. Capricorn. I usually save that like before I put the camera on, but I'm well, I did it. I'm doing it again. Too, you know, that's a good lesson too. Maybe someone needs like the energy feels completely different. Maybe I went through that whole process. Because I needed to for somebody. Maybe somebody's pulling their own cards. It's really good to have some sort of a little mantra before. Because all energy, spirits, everything work on um, one of the biggest rules in our universe. Which is um, freedom of choice. If you need to specifically ask who's coming in to give you guidance. I know I always get the R now. Yeah, everybody's on their own journey. The odd person who says, you know, thank you, Cindy, I'm out of here. I became religious and I'm not going to do tarot anymore. It's evil. Well, some people just take it, take in their own journey and they don't want to um, involve themselves anymore, which is which is absolutely fine. And I feel that they're probably really going in the right path for themselves because they're feeling something. But then sometimes I get the funny comments about, you know, I started going to church and that's evil. <laughs> so you know how evil you're all going to hell. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so where are you right now? The Four of Swords. You're resting. You're healing. That's what it's telling me. That's where you are right now. What is your challenge? The King of Cups. All of your deep feelings and emotions. Dealing with those. Being comfortable with them. Maybe deciding if you want to share your deep feelings and emotions or if you don't want to share them. Because right now, kind of like keeping to yourself. Keeping to yourself, resting and healing. Should you focus on a Six of Pentacles? So you might actually be able to give to some people that could use it. You might be in some sort of a position to give of yourself here. I do want to say, too, like to receive as well. Lately, I've been getting that from this card. Like to give and receive equally. Like, but for yourself to know when, you know, you can be open to receive. When you're in a position to receive and a position to, to give. Your past is a Six of Cups. Very reminiscent. This is a very... Um, nostalgic card really with the the older people in the background sometimes you look at this card and you wonder is it an old couple in the background that you know maybe they're sitting and talking about um, times gone past maybe they've raised their own kids or even maybe they knew each other as kids and these children could be something from the past that they're both kind of bringing into their mind talking about or they could be sitting here and these could be their grandchildren or they just could be someone else's kids. And it's it's very like nostalgic. So I feel very nostalgic energy. Maybe there's some sort of um, indication for you to move forward, but you're kind of, there's something that you're leaving behind. So there's some sort of nostalgia. I'm having a deja vu about this. This whole message seems really familiar. Like I've said this before, your strength is the Four of Cups. <laughs> this reminds me of the Four of Swords. Because most of the time in the Four the four of Cups and other tarot, it's about missing an offer because you're so focused on three other cups. And you sort of miss another offer, which it just sort of says that your your mood, your emotions were, were not in the same um, frequency as something that's been offered to you. And because of that, you really didn't see it for what it was. And then down the road, you might see it later on and go, shoot that seemed like a really good opportunity i don't really get that with this deck this reminds me an awful lot of this 
So what you're doing right where you are right now is actually your strength. So does resting and healing, but maybe sort of a meditative practice too. I'm not taking any cups right now. I feel like you're not taking any cups. I feel like you're not thinking too much about cups. Except your own deep, deep cup, your own deep feelings and emotions here. And something from the past that makes you feel very nostalgic. So your future, oh, here we go. Is this the world card? Ooh, Capricorn. This is interesting. Why has this reading been blocked? This reading is flowing now. Like I really know at this point, I feel very confident this reading is going to air. It feels different. There's something about your past and this is your future. So this is like a major ending, a massive ending in a cycle for you. And a brand new beginning is coming around. And you guys had this very significantly a few months ago <clears throat> with the world card. And if I remember correctly, the really freaky weird thing was in the extended for that reading. Um, you don't have to go there. I don't remember what the reading was called. But in the extended for that reading... I pulled out 21 major arcana. It was so crazy weird. And now it's just like there's something about the energy around you right now. A massive shift. So maybe that's what it is. Like you're showing up in these two cards where this person's eyes are closed. They're in some sort of a state of rest, reflection, meditation, healing, to sleep quiet but it, it feels like to me the energy around you almost feels like chaos but not chaos but massive shifts and change perhaps i like to say that chaos is that change that comes in that's unexpected to me it's i mean the universe seems to have so much order around it i mean the more more and more science looks into to life and how everything functions there seems to be so much rhythm and order within it but chaos is that surprise that kind of into the evolutionary process where wow either this is really going to go well or it's not going to succeed and it's going to go in, in the dumpster this kind of feels like that sort of feeling around you i feel really something it's like knowing something is coming or feeling it It almost leaves you with a bit of a an uncomfortable feeling because, I don't know, it's like you're in the in-between and about to go into the future. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So your suggested approach, wow, is the Knight of Cups. Now look at the King of Cups is your challenge. All the feelings and emotions that you have. But the King Cups doesn't show that. It's hanging on to it pretty tight. But your suggested approach, I don't know, it doesn't even have to go wild with me. I don't know. It's not the Page of Cups. It's the Knight of Cups, baby. It's going forward, or at least going forward into some sort of energy that you, you feel. It's big. It does what I'm looking for. Such a simple word. Having trouble finding it. Big. That's what it is. It feels like you're going into a big energy here. But you're not there right now. It's a little bit like, oh, yeah. <laughs> reminds me of, this is what it reminds me of. So I don't know if any of you out there have a phobia about anything. I have like a really deep-seated phobia. Oh, it really bothers me. I don't know why. Sometimes I think that I must have drowned in another life. And that's why it bothers me. But I love swimming in water. But I get totally creeped out. Like if I, especially if I know I'm not, if it gets me unexpected, it really bothers me. Like logs and boulders and things like that under the water, but like murky water. I don't know. Like, and it's not just as, ew, it's kind of creepy. Like literally, I feel like my soul is trying to jump out of my skin. So what I saw when I said, it's like this big energy, but you're not quite there yet. It reminded me of when I was a kid and I would go snorkeling out in the lake where my grandfather lived. 
And um, there was a huge rock pile under the water. And it was about, maybe it was about 40 yards from shore. So I had to swim out to it. And the funny thing was, as you went, it would start to get deeper, but not so deep that you couldn't see the bottom. And then all of a sudden it came up again. It started getting lighter or the, the, the sand at the bottom because it was closer to the, the daylight. It was, so it, it got more shallow and I knew I'm about to hit the rock pile. So I prepared, and it was a fascinating place to go. So I forced myself to go there, which was easy. Um, because there was like all sorts of fish and you could see the little aqua habitats down there. Some of them had nests and they were guarding their little fish eggs. And it was just a fascinating place. And you could stand on the rocks there and it would be about up to here on you. So it wasn't too bad. But if you got out of the rock pile and headed to shore, it would be over your head. So it was interesting. But there was some times where I missed the rock pile. And I was thinking, now it's getting really deep. And I start to freak out. Like, oh my God, I'm going to hit something that I'm not expecting. And then um, I would sort of change my, or I'd pop up and I would look to shore because there was a birch tree that I had to line up with to get to um, this rock pile. So I'm telling you this because this is what your energy feels like to me. So it's almost like you know it's there, and but it's kind of creeping, <laughs> creeping around or you're creeping around the energy. And so I wouldn't hit the rock pile in, like head on from shore when I would expect to. I would be coming out sort of like this. So it would be rocks that I wouldn't necessarily be familiar with seeing right away at that angle, at that depth. And they would be big, big, big boulders. Big, big boulders. I'm sure some glacier just left them there. It's like really fascinating. So, and then it would it be like the shadow coming through the water of this big thing. But then, so as you're at it from a distance, that's what it, where I'm getting here, that's where I'm going. And deal, deal with me. <laughs> Be patient with me here um, because I'm dealing with something that really bothers me and I'm feeling it as I'm talking about it to you. But that's what I'm feeling here is from a distance, it would just freak me out, freak me out, freak me out. I want to go back, I want to go back. But I'm thinking, I can't go back because I'm not on my path. <laughs> I'm not on the path I was on before. And there could be a big log that I'll come across that I'm not familiar with and I'm going to freak out. So I have to go towards the boulders because I know once I get into rock pile, I'll be okay. Once I get in there, I'll be okay. So I would, but that's what I'm saying. Like once you, if you feel this big energy around you, it kind of leaves you feeling unsettled. It's like an unsettled feeling. That's what I get here out of this reading. Um, go towards the rock pile towards because once you get there it's going to feel better you have big feelings and emotions about this whatever it is and like maybe it's not you're not on the path that you thought you would be to get to it you've been taken off course a little bit and you've popped your head up oh it's over there i gotta go over there i can't really go back because it's not it was meandering to get here and the chances are I'm not going to, like, stay on that meandering path. I have to go over there. It's the rock pile. Because once you get closer, it gets better. Right. And then you can stand on top of the big bowl and say, I'm, I'm so brave. Yes. Okay. We have to come out of that energy. It's taking me a second. I don't know if I can because this is the feeling of the reading. And if I go canoeing and kayaking, ah, oh, <laughs> I have to lift my feet and the oars up and just float over things and okay let's see it and look okay it's gone i know it's terrible it's silly right oh my gosh okay so then what you need to know the page of wands some sort of communication nice communication that's all you need to know it's going to be nice even the big boulder are going to get along just great nice communication there's something to be heard there's something to be learned your hopes and fears. Ooh, the Queen of Swords. That boulder might be scary. So, maybe like a really big direct truth. Maybe being cut out from something. With the Queen of Swords is a hope or a fear. I'm going to say it's either the hope that you have really clear understanding here. That communication is clear. What's intended is clear. What's understood is clear. 
But then the fear could be, it's going to get cut out. And something that you have a lot of feelings and emotions about, <clears throat> like it could mean something important to you. Like there is something in the past. There's something very nostalgic to you. Something close to your heart from the past. And your hope and fear is a queen of swords. It's kind of like, yeah, I want to go to the rock pile. But what if I miss it and I have to go the other way? And there was one time, I'm going to have to get a massage. There was one time um, where I went way past. And I ended up in black water and I couldn't even find the rock pile going this way. And that was really scary. So, you know, like, it's, that's what this feels like. It really does feel like that to me. So your potential future. That's interesting. It's the five of swords. This tells me you're going to become clear about something and want to move out of the rock pile, maybe? Interesting. There's a really interesting energy about you, Capricorn. Wow. Holy crap. What do you have? Your underlying, it keeps going. I've never had, my cards are always totally mixed up. I can't believe how many underlying cards you have here. I can't even do it all. It's a reading in itself. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven cards. I'm just going to show you. I'm going to show you quick and I'm going to tell you just what it feels like in terms of a story. Because the underlying is important. To me, it's often the reason we're here. This is the underlying reason for the reading. The Hierophant, the Hermit, the death card, look at like three major arcana all in a row. The king of wands, the five of pentacles, the three of cups, the king of swords, the queen of pentacles, the nine of wands, the moon card, and the queen of cups. This is meandering like I've never seen meandering before. Excuse me. We'll start with the major arcana. Hierophant, hermit, and death card. This is taking a break from something or being away from something very significant. It could be a relationship. It's something that you have um, almost a contractual tie to. It could be work. It could be your community. It could be your family. And taking a siesta from that and that that siesta turns into like an ending. Something here, major, needing a break and deciding, I don't think I want to go back to that. So you come into this King of Wands energy and really feeling confident, like, wow, I had the balls to do that. I had the balls to go to the rock pile and deny the rock pile. Now you're in a very creative stance, really creative energy, but kind of realizing, oh, I'm not part of that anymore, am I? No, but there's some sort of reconciliation here. But then we have the King of Swords. So it feels intimidating. It feels like there's a bit of an intimidating factor here that goes on with this King of Swords and this reconciling. But now there's nurturing. Look what's just behind the King of Swords. I feel like there's some sort of persona here. Whether it's maybe something that you left and you left it to, to find your own creative pursuit, to find your own um, foothold, your own strength here. But in doing that, you had to move away from something else and be isolated from it. The reconciliation, like coming together again and kind of a happy, easy go energy. Boy, this guy's intimidating, I'm telling you. So it could be a boss. It could be some sort of a professional. But sitting behind that is a very nurturing energy. Kind of tired. Very nurturing. Kind of tired. Maybe, maybe you left some sort of a work position or home and somebody else has been kind of picking up the slack or doing that. Not necessarily, it could just be for one person, but they're definitely, they're fatigued. And about the unknown, it's an expression of feelings and emotions. So, I said I wasn't going to go too deep in that. I already kind of went deep with that. I want to clarify some stuff here. The first thing we're going to clarify is your five of swords, your potential future. I feel like you're running away from something, or you will be. Getting the heck um, 
Yeah. The Five of Swords, a potential future for Capricorn with this Five of Swords. I don't know what you're running away from because this is really good energy. This is the energy of something that you find highly attractive, really sexy, fun, and dynamic, mutual love, affection, emotions. I want to say, too, with both of these queens, these are the two queens that I would say are very intuitive. Very intuitive energy. Why would you run away from something like that? So he is looking back. This person is looking back. Then what are you running towards? Fantasies? What the heck? I'm telling you, this is the weirdest reading I've ever done. You are running away from something that could be real here. But you'd rather run into your fantasies or be, or maybe you have two choices. Maybe you have two choices. I don't know, Capricorn. <laughs> your reading was going real smooth here, and now I'm not sure why you would be running away from something like that and prefer to run into fantasy. But, you know, everybody's got their own story. Fantasy and confusion. You're hoping your fear is the Queen of Swords. Maybe because these seem like a dream energy to me. Like, if it's a person, I do want to say it. They're court cards, so I'm going to put it as a person. You would find this person, like, you would be extremely attractive physically. There'd be a sexual draw to this person. But your heart, too, like, you would be in love. <laughs> well, it's really odd. So... I want to say with the Queen of Swords, with your your hopes and fears, in some way, maybe your hope is, it's like your hope is really understanding that this could be yours, that there's some sort of clarity here. But the fear is actually getting what you want. Because you can cut yourself out of something too with that card. Your hopes and fears. Your hope and fear is about a new beginning. Watching, you're hoping, watching and waiting. Like something that makes you feel really excited and really passionate about life. But then there's a sword there. I feel like there's something else going on underneath the surface. Everyone's going to be different. But it's a weird, weird energy, man. We are, I am recording this on the full moon of Virgo. Tonight, where I am, it's the full moon in Virgo. I don't know if that energy is having some sort of effect on you or even the cards. It's really strange. Like I've almost already gone back into that energy where I was having trouble with the other two videos, readings that I tried to do with you. Your future. Let's look at, I'm going to look at your future. To see what this is. This is something major. This is where you're going. The world card. The world card for Capricorn. The Knight of Cups. And the Knight of Cups was the suggested approach. So the suggested approach is something that you're going to feel comfortable doing. I really, I, your potential future is very unusual to me. Why? Why would, no, I asked, well, what are you running? No, I didn't ask why, why you would run away from this. Running away from what you would find really attractive, would like really get your mojo going, really get your heart racing and go towards like a lot of different options, confusion. Fantasies, dreams? Like, well, why? Why would you do that? Why would Capricorn do that? Justice and the Chariot. You know, I want to say, like, maybe there's something else about, maybe you're attracted to someone and you're not available? I don't know. That could be what that is. It's just better to keep this as a fantasy, not to... But why do you want to move? These are so contradictory, Capricorn. 
So, but you want to move forward. So, okay, who do you want to move forward with, with this Knight of Cups? This is a suggested approach, but it's also your future. So you're going there. Where, who is the, with the Knight of Cups? The Hermit and the Page of Wands. Maybe you're not the one that left the situation. Because here we go. The Hermit and the Hierophant. Okay, you know what this feels like a little bit to me, Capricorn? I'm going to tell you what I'm getting with this right now. Because the Hierophant is connected with this Hermit. So there's some sort of, I want to say this could be a marriage. It could be a work contract. It's something like that. So it feels like to me that you are attracted to, to someone. Attracted to someone. There's the opportunity for possibly to move forward with this person. But deciding not to, to keep it as a dream, to keep it as a fantasy. And because the hermit is connected with this disconnect from the Hierophant, I feel like where you're taking your cup is back to something that you have that you already have. This reminiscent energy. So it seems like to me, Capricorn, that you are reinvesting into an existing relationship where you may have felt swayed to go into another one or kind of felt pulled to go into another one. Now we have the Page of Wands here twice. What you need to know, the Page of Wands. What Capricorn needs to know with the Page of Wands. The Eight of Swords. So there's been like no movement from someone. There's been Hermit. You know, it also feels like too, when I have a reading where it feels like I have just as many um, people watching who the reading is meant for as I do cross watchers. Like there's a real weird crossing over of the energy happening. I'm almost getting to the point I can't tell who walked away and I can't tell who didn't walk away. So you're going to have to see how it resonates for you. Because I do feel like I'm reading for cross watchers and Capricorn at this point. So what I'm seeing is Capricorn putting their, they're offering their cup back to a committed relationship and walking away and walking away from what they're really attracted to and where they really have feelings and just going to keep that as a fantasy, as something to imagine and think about. That's what that seems like. Yeah, because this is your, this is also your challenge. You have a lot of feelings and emotions here, but you don't, you're not showing them. I'm just, before I go into the accepted, I want to see if there's anything else I need to look at. No, I think the rest of it is clear. You know, I will. I'm going to ask, actually, for the cross watchers. I'm going to ask, how um, does Capricorn really feel about this connection? This deeper, the committed connection that it feels like they're going back to. Because I'm not 100% sure if you're walking away from something that you have a lot of um, desire and attraction and love for. What are you going back to? So how does Capricorn feel about the connection that they're going back towards? Ah, it's all about the stability. It's all about the stability and the abundance and the happy home life. Well, it doesn't have to be happy. It's not the Ten of Cups. So it is. There's something very, um, something that a lot of work and effort has gone into building Capricorn. So you're going to stick with that. <laughs> this is such a reading. Oh my God. I don't think I've ever had a reading like this. I can hardly wait to go to the extended. I'm so nosy. Oh my god oh my god almost 40 minutes in holy crap capricorn i dug i found it took a while i'm gonna go do the extended thank you so much guys we finally got through it until next time do be gentle with yourselves bye